Today, Ion Business Innovation is here at South by Southwest Venture to Venture in Las Vegas, and we are very pleased to have a special guest, the keynote speaker, Ari Horier. Ari, welcome. Thank you for having me today. Well, it's an honor for us to have you. So um, I want to start with a couple things based on your talk today. Yes. Uh, you began as what I would call an entrepreneur. You were working for other large companies. Mm -hmm. What made you decide to transition to being an entrepreneur? What transition? Um, working for a big company yep. really helped me to understand the, what is the professionalism and uh, many other things. I didn't realize that till I left. Okay. And I had a choice of going back. But also I realized that I do enjoy making a difference and just to be on the ground and hands on. And uh, starting the startup was just a way for me to um, share my idea, passion, and really go out there um, providing something that I felt that was missing. So did you start this yourself? Did you work with other people? I mean, what was the beginning of, of okay. your entrepreneurial venture there? Well, I had my own startup. Okay. Uh, I was okay. in um, edge tech. And so um, I was uh, running that company, and it was a demo stage and okay, uh, testing okay. out. Along the way, I've noticed the female entrepreneur wasn't yeah. much uh, visible. So I said, well, let's gather those uh, scattered female entrepreneurs in one place and see how we can actually support each other. So Women Startup Lab actually started as uh, a hobby okay. and uh, yeah. gathered other amazing uh, motivated inspire the mind together and see what we can do to solve some of the problem. Okay. Yes. And, and obviously, uh, all of us as entrepreneurs uh, going out there, a meeting of people, developing skills, and gaining a knowledge. And when I saw women are very much uh, running around trying to balance their family life and other yeah. priority, I came to the point of we as an organization, do we have a power? Do we have a more network that we can expand and so that we can really make a difference for a female entrepreneur to run their startup while they're running other part of life and continue to grow and stay powerful? Sounds good. Now, you mentioned a very interesting concept in your talk, HITO. Yes. And you told several stories about how you received HITO from others, if I understand it correctly. Correct. What changed where you were suddenly the giver of HITO? Ah, well, HITO is a Japanese character. The two person leaning on each other okay. uh, means human. Okay. And this really uh, core of our philosophy at the Women's Startup Lab. And um, what, what made us special is not only I have uh, those personal moment that other mm -hmm. people have stepped in um, and got to the point that as an as a organization, we can be the other hito, okay. the leading piece to okay. support the female entrepreneur. Okay. Okay. And, uh, and I, I wouldn't have done it, I wouldn't have taken this far without having some of the female activists Okay. Um, okay. sharing what they have to go through okay. to pave the way for us that, that I never actually realized. Okay. And not only I was inspired by their talk and encouragement, and I hope that, that much of a gap is in field so that our future generation doesn't okay. really have to have an organization like us saying okay. Women Startup Lab, but actually Startup Lab. Now, is there a particular story or example you can give of where your Accelerator provided HITO for a woman entrepreneur and, and maybe what the result was? Oh, thank you. Uh, yes, okay. we um, have graduated a 25 uh, female entrepreneur uh, okay. and uh, we have five or six companies raising millions of uh, a f a fund and two of which have just to, uh, closed their deal. The one has been acquired by IBM, the other one acquired by a media company. And when when they were in the program, uh, in many way, they were obviously very successful uh, startup uh, and, and great entrepreneur. But also when they were in, they were exposed with a various high impact, influential leader in the valley. Okay. So when they were thinking about acquisition, they might had a year and a half long dragged, let's say acquisition opportunity. Uh, they met more powerful uh, advisors who actually step in and play the role of a CEO. 
and that made their uh, uh, deal much cl uh, close much uh, earlier. Um, other founder who were just about to go to a very big um, meeting with a corporate, those corporations would actually put the money to help them to develop, okay. right? And one of the founders actually stepped in as a hito, okay. said, I have dealt with working with many big company. And let me tell you how to bring the conversation forward so you can actually okay. close the deal in a short period of time. So um, if, when we talk about hito, somebody step in to help your business grow. Okay. I've seen that not only uh, among our advisor who step in and take a critical role when they need, and also other founders stepping in, having a, this really intimate closed door to say, not talking about just the business need, but a you as a leader, how you have to control okay. the conversation that ends with, yes, she's a confidence. Yes, she knows what she's talking about. Yes, I want to work with her. Okay. Right? So that's how we have seen the great success out of our community. Okay. Now, in your community, uh, you say you've now had 25 companies that have gone through? Yes. Are they at the stage where they're providing HITO for one another? Uh, that's a very good question. Um, yes, many of them do in uh, within their really demanding busy schedule. Okay. Okay. Uh, some of them become advisor for a uh, particular industry. Some have gone out um, and giving a, a speech okay. and elevate the conversation and positioning of uh, how female entrepreneurs are successful out there. Okay. Okay. Uh, some uh, alum actually, you know, do come back our organization and constantly being the role model, uh, teaching some of the very specific uh, skills that certain stage of a startup found to have to be aware of. So it's it's just keep keep getting stronger and you know growing faster and faster. Sounds exciting. Yes. It is really exciting. It's it's honor. Now you've talked about investors. Um, how was that as a struggle in the beginning getting investors to? focus on uh, a woman's accelerator? Um, in, do you mean investor to our organization or to founder? Well, both. Both, okay. Um, you know, it's been a much learning process for me okay. because they, as let's say angel or VC, they have their job to do. Yep, yep. And, and they're not going around to say, I'm investing just because you're a woman. Yep, yep. Um, you know, just as much as, um, if I didn't have a focus on a woman, it wouldn't be fair that I just pick just because you're a certain group. Um, and investors have that responsibility running a fund. Though, um, I'm really pleased to see much of uh, concerns and issue and uh, thought-provoking question has been raised right in front of them. And ultimately, they own 100% decision how they're gonna fund. But I think it, as, as an organization, as Women's Startup Lab, and as a, all of us community coming together, s saying that, look, here's the data. It's not that you haven't invested or you're a bad guy, but here is the opportunity you're missing. Yep, yep. And I think that's the true power of a community coming together and continue to um, have an important message to be shared. So yes, it's about women at Women's Startup Lab, but ultimately, it's about the business that we can build together um, and uh, the business that the investor will be happy with. And that's where we are moving forward and the more support we're going to get. And I think um, it's not about just the woman, but the male community is coming together as well to seeing that, yes, I want to play the game with you. <laughs> now, you are providing terrific education at what we'll call the late stage of development for entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. What do you think ought to be done different in earlier stage education, like the stories you told about your own childhood, that would help entrepreneurs get better prepared earlier on? Earlier on, are you talking before, about? Before they get to your accelerator. Ah, well, um, I think it, you have to spend your time wisely, and I'm sure we hear about this over and over, but I would really question um, you playing a small game. I was talking about uh, today at the mm -hmm. keynote that aim high. Yep. You could spend three hours writing email to uh, many that you think they will respond, but make sure you mix 20% of your time spent to the, the most remarkable people that you will be so thrilled that if they respond. And they have a power and network and a, and a passion that actually 
you know, swing the one and they were just to bring something completely different for your business to excel. So um, as, as you go through the early stage, uh, yes, do the validation. T just talk to customer, really find out, you know, what you you'll have, your idea is really resonating uh, the target audience. That's really critical. And are they willing to pay for that? That's another one. And making sure that your network is not just reaching to the people you think you can, but aiming really high. Is there anything special about the accelerator you'd like to tell our audience about here? Thank you. Um, we are really excited about um, putting our program together since last year, and we have much success. And we're so thrilled to have not only the startup who have done amazing work, uh, but we're also very interested in uh, accepting and supporting a female entrepreneur at an early stage. Um, I would say 90% of a startup never get to the point of having an uh, investor being interested. Yeah. And most of Accelerator, you know, only pick those are actually at that level or really um, early stage, but the, the team is built by engineers. And when you look at that, women uh, lose out the opportunity in getting support. So we, Women Startup Lab, really, really interested in um, taking ambitious, audacious, committed women who wants to pursue their startup in an early stage. And it, um, what I would like to say to uh, people is not just the f about the people who starts, but um, everybody has a, a, a contribution piece in it, as I talked about Hito, and I welcome any consultant, investor, um, advisor who gets involved and really create powerful community with us. Now, any final words of advice for young pre-entrepreneurs that may have been um, that may not have been able to come to the conference, but are out there wearing their pink backpacks. Uh, <laughs> and uh, but any words of advice for the younger generation before they even get to be entrepreneurs? Yeah, we we unconsciously said to those young children, "What are you going to do when you grow up?" Okay. And we have to shift the conversation, saying, "What's so special about you as now, as eight years old?" and have a conversation and embrace their differences, embrace their idea, embrace their passion, excitement, and really have them see they can do amazing startup, their own, and do it really cheaply these days. And uh, we adults continue to embrace their differences uh, and be their hito, step in, and, and really allow them to see the opportunity. You have a remarkable story, and you obviously have a remarkable mother. Uh, the stories you've told about her and the hito she provided you on being different and taking chances. I mean, it's an amazing story. So we really thank you for not only sharing it here at South by Southwest V2V, but sharing it with our larger audience out there. Thank uh, you. Congratulations on your success to date, and we wish you much, much more. Thank you so much for having me. Mahalo. Thank you. This has been Eye on Business Innovation. We have been interviewing Ari Horier here at South by Southwest Venture to Venture in Las Vegas.